He's an eight-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champ. He's got more sacks than any active player in the NFL, and he's hosting a charity event this week called Vaughn's Vision to distribute glasses to underserved kids, and we'll get to that in a second. But Vaughn Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Howdy, guys. Thank you guys for having me. So, uh, our pleasure. So, I, I saw a headline the other day, Vaughn, that said, the Buffalo Bills Super Bowl run is dependent on Von Miller's knee. And I feel like it's a lot of pressure to put on mm. one human's tendons, but I'm just curious how the knee is and how's everything going right now. And I look forward to the problem because I can control me, I can control myself. Um, pressure comes from within. Um, you know, if you, if you feel like you haven't put the work in, if you feel like you're not ready for the moment, that's where the pressure comes from. There's a there's no pressure on the outside. It's it's all pressure from within. And hmm. me, I've been recovering my knee, I'm taking it one day at a time, controlling what I can control. And if it's all on Vaughn, if it's all on Vaughn going out there and do what he's supposed to do, that's how I want it because I'm gonna get the job done. Hmm. And speaking of keeping tendons healthy, uh, I was watching a play from this weekend where your quarterback Josh Allen, very important player, is running around <laughs> like it's the playoff game and his life depended on it. Uh, is there a point where you've got to tell Josh, hey, slow down, or these games aren't important? Do you reel him in, or you just kind of let him go? No, that's how that's how he plays football. That's that's what makes. Josh Allen, Josh Allen. Um, he's a, he's a great player. He's always trying to do the most to win, um, and that's that's how you want it. You know, you can't um, put a guy in there and tell him to go half speed. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> doesn't work like that. If you don't want him to play, then you know he shouldn't play. But that's just how Josh plays, man. And I love the way he plays, man. And he's a great quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And you know, of course, it's the preseason, and you know, it's it's you don't want to yeah. see all this stuff. But that's just the way the guy plays, and he's going to continue to play like that. Vaughn, uh, this was going around social media last week. As someone who's won two Super Bowls, when you go to your practice facility and you see a Lombardi trophy that the Bills have not won, and it says one team, one goal, do you look around and you're like, uh, guys, I've won these. We're not just going to be putting these up without winning them. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, this is one of the, the, the greatest uh, sports, to uh, sports stories left. Um, you know, the, the, the Bills went to four straight Super Bowls in the 90s and lost them all. Um, for us to be able to get there and win it, this that'll be one of the greatest. Uh, this That's one of the last uh, great sports stories. And, you know, this town bleeds uh, bleeds Buffalo Bills football. It bleeds, uh, you know, red and blue. Um, they're all about football here. And they're dying for it. And we're dying to give it to them. Um, we have a great team. We have all the things in, in, in place. We just got to keep going at it. We got to keep going at it. Our Super Bowl window is still open. Teams get better each and every year. We get better. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be exciting for us. Um, it's, it's definitely a motivator. And this is part of the reason why I came here. Once you once you win a Super Bowl, once you get to the Super Bowl and you win it, it creates this, this addiction to get back there. And I want that so bad for my teammates. I want it so bad for me and, and myself. But I want it so bad for my team, my teammates in this city. I want those 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 guys and these people to be able to experience that. You've been a part of a lot of great pass rushes, mainly because you were a part of them. But uh, Buffalo is pretty stacked. You brought in Leonard Floyd. You have Greg Russo over there. Even if uh, you might navigate an injury or two, it seems as though the, the added depth took your injury in mind. Uh, where does this pass rush rank in terms of the teams that you've been on? We, we got a great squad. This is probably the deepest uh, pass for a squad that I've, I've been a part of. You know, back in Denver, it was it was just me. It was just me, Shaq Barrett, um, Demarcus Ware, and Shane Ray. Um, in, in LA, it was just me, Leonard Floyd, Aaron Donald, and and and, and Greg Gaines. So here we have a whole roster full of guys. We got AJ uh, Epinesa. We got Boogie Basham. We got Shaq Lawson. We got Greg Rousseau, Leonard Floyd. And I think it all evolves. I'll give you guys a scouting secret. Hmm. But it, it all evolves around Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver is, is our guy. Um, you know, he can do so many different things. He can line up in a five, line up in a nine. He's so active. Um, he, he's so explosive off the ball. That is our guy on the inside. And we just got to find ways to, to get him to the quarterback. And we got to be able to help out and, and help him in a way so he can be uh, successful. Vaughn, uh, you're obviously not practicing yet but you've got 
Damar Hamlin back in practice. And that was such an interesting topic because it's such a great feeling, but then people obviously get a little concerned, maybe not realizing that, you know, his condition or his incident was completely random and a coincidence and they're not putting himself in further risk out there. But just curious what that has been like having him out there, the reception that he got early on, and just your thoughts on watching, you know, the man who died on the field, came back to life and is now back doing what he loves to do. You know, back uh, back when it happened and in, in, at the beginning of January, it was tough. You know, I think it brought the whole world together. And I think uh, DeMar has handled, you know, that situation in, in, in a magical way. You know, he's uh, used all the the, the, the the fame and the notoriety and the, and the, and the attention for good. Um, it's never been about DeMar Hamlin. He's, he's doing stuff for kids. He's doing stuff for CPR classes. He's trying to raise awareness. Um, for the situation that he had, but on the football field, he just looks like Demar. It's a, uh, it's a thing of the past. You know, he's out there playing football. He's tackling guys. He's back to his old self, man. I think that's where he. That's I think that's where he wants it to be. He wants to focus back on his football play, and he's playing at a at a great rate for us. He, he's playing great. He, in the last game, he had a lot of great tackles, and I still coach him up. Like you know, he's I, I still look at him like Demar. I give him. I don't, I don't put in, uh, I don't, I don't put in the mind that you know the, the incident that happened on the football field. He's back and he's ready to go, and we, we coach him up, and he plays in that manner for sure. It's a roller coaster of emotions you guys underwent uh, last year, and now that he's back in the fold, and it it feels like you have somewhat of a normal routine. I'm wondering if anybody's found any humor in it. Is he challenging other guys in the locker room to get back from their injuries? Because Vaughn, like he's back before you. This is improbable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not. And, and, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a serious situation, man. We, we don't joke about any of that stuff, man. It's, it's really all the thing of the past. And DeMar is just so focused on being a better football player. And I think he wants to put that behind him. I think he wants I think he wants the attention and recognition back on his football play. You know, he's a great player. And, and before that incident happened, I, I pulled him to the side. I was like, man, you're playing great, man. Like, nobody I, – I, I thought he was a first-round pick. You know, I, I, I mm-hmm. never – put into mind that, uh, you know, he was a late round pick and, you know, um, some of the adversity that he had to overcome coming to the, to the Buffalo Bills. Like he's, he is a great football player and all the attention is being on him being a great football player and trying to push him to be even better. Yeah. Nobody really remembers that he was uh, filling in for Micah Hyde, very good player for a lot of that season. So yeah. Um, tell us about more of this uh, Vaughn's vision, the charity event that you have this week before we move on. So we got a uh, Vaughn's Vision charity event. We're giving back glasses. Um, we, we've had all these kids uh, get fitted for glasses and had their eye exams. It's a lot of kids that don't even that don't even know that they have vision problems. And that can be a game changer in the classroom. Like if you can't see the board and you don't even know that you have vision problems, like you're already behind the ball. And these are issues that I've had since I was a, a, a young boy. I started Vaughn's Vision in 2012. Um, after a year just sitting back and trying to find a way to to have an impact like my teammates had. Tim Tebow had the Tim Tebow Foundation and he was doing so many wonderful things. He was building hospitals in the Philippines and he was changing lives. And I went to one of his events and I was like, man, I wanna have this same type of impact on the world. And it took me a year um, in 2012, I, I took off my glasses and I was signing autographs and then it just hit me like, hmm. I'm gonna start uh, Vaughn's Vision. I'm gonna give back contacts, uh, LASIK surgery, eye exams, pretty much everything in need everything um, that children might need um, vision wise. And, you know, I started off to help one or two kids and to raise over $5 million and help over 5,000 kids in, in five or six different, five or six different cities. It's, it's been a, it's been a true blessing and it's been humbling for so many people to get, to get around and rally around my cause. The AFC East has become kind of the talk of the NFL, one of the more competitive divisions now, because obviously Aaron Rodgers going in, you have Tua coming back, and he might be healthy. How is he going to do with the Dolphins once he's healthy? When you hear that Tyreek Hill plays Madden instead of watching tape to prepare <laughs> for games, is that something that has you discount the Dolphins in any way? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, you know, we have a lot of great coaches. Um, you know, this is this is a, a shout out and an appreciation to the coaches around the, the National Football League. We have some of the best teachers in the entire world. For these guys to have patience with grown men and, and go over the same topic week in and week out and push these grown men to be better, um, it, it uh, is definitely, um, I, I take I take so much appreciation in that. And we have great coaches here. Um, there really isn't, you know, I, I play outside linebacker, I rush the passer. It really isn't much 
to do after you leave the facility because our coaches go over each and every aspect of the game. And I'm sure the Miami Dolphins do the same thing. And, you know, you 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 need time off. You you need to be able to relax and unwind. And I'm sure Tyreek Hill is, is in the same way. I'm, I'm sure they have great coaches that go over each and every nuance of each and every play, each and every game. And they do a great job of coaching us up. Um, you know, in this league, you got a lot of great teams. you got a lot of great players. And what separates um, these great teams is really the mindset. Um, it's not, you know, the the knowing the technique. It, it's not knowing the plays. Like, Tyreek, he's been in the league for a very long time. I, I'm sure he knows each and everything about routes and defensive formations and offensive formations. Sometimes you just need that, that time to be able to relax. I'm the same way. I don't. I don't I don't go home and play Madden. You know, I, I like to <laughs> golf and get on a simulator and do all of that stuff. But you need time to be able to, to relax and unwind and kind of decompress. That way you can push harder and focus harder whenever you're at the facility. Have you seen the clips that have gone around, speaking of the AFC East, of Hard Knocks and the magician or the illusionist that went to the Jets and had Aaron Rodgers pick out a card and then it turned into a fish that was inside of a piece of plastic? Is that something that Sean McDermott is doing around <laughs> Bill's camp? No, no, it, it, it's not. Uh, coach McDermott is, is more of a hard, hard nosed coach. Um, I started to watch the hard knocks, but then mm. it was just like, nah, man. You I, couldn't I, get past the whole Eagle Crow story, right? Because we were watching no, that in the episode one, and it was like, okay, this is kind of. Bull- Robert's and I couldn't get past. I couldn't really get past five minutes of of hard knocks. It was just like the Aaron Rodgers show, and it's like, man, mm-hmm. we getting ready to play the we getting ready to play the Jets, and it just too much. Aaron. To me, it just felt. To me, it just it, it just felt like, man, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch this team. Like, if it might have been the Cowboys or somebody else, like I'm still got a little Cowboys fan in my heart. If it was if it was anybody else, but it's the Jets. You, you hate know, the they're, Jets. They're annoying. You could say it. They're, I won't say, I, won't say I hate the Jets. No, but, they're you know, annoying. That, you could say that, it. <laughs> division divisional rivalry. We got to play these. We got to play these guys twice a year. Um, they're loading up. They got a great defense. Um, they got a great offense. They just got Aaron Rodgers. Um, Garrett Wilson is is one of the best receivers in the re- league. They get Bryce Hall back. Um, they're getting healthy on offense. The offensive line, um, keep uh, M- Makai Beckton is is has the potential to be one of the best tackles in the league. And I just, for me, it's just I don't want to hear about how great another team is. So I just, I just watched a little bit of it, and it just, it, it just kind of turned me out. Win something. We put up yeah, guys say, twice a year. say it. Win something. <laughs> Earn that Lombardi Trophy you put up in your practice. Facility. No, no, they, 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 they real win. They real win. They will win. Um, they have a, a very competitive team, and they did a lot without Aaron Rodgers last year. So it's only um. I mean, you can only predict and, and you can only, you know, fill, fill in the blanks. Once you get Aaron Rodgers, get some guys healthy. Quinn Williams is, is a beast. So I'm a huge fan of, of Quinn Williams. Um, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of, of, of South Gar- South Gardner. We've played Call of Duty together. I, like, I, I love my colleagues around the league. I just didn't want to sit there and just watch a whole hour talking about how great the Jets was. It was just me. Yeah. I, you know, I want to focus on the Bills and and focus on how I can get my team better. Vaughn, I don't want to keep you from the golf simulator, but I do want to let you brag about your golf game a little bit. <laughs> it's coming along. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 18. I just got my my uh, my gen number. I got my official handicap. I'm a, I'm a 18. I'm working it down. Um, and it's not it's not for me. It's not really the scorecard because I can hit all the shots. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't I don't I can hit all the shots. I can I can hit the 330 yard drive. I can hit the flop shot. You know, I can I can do everything. It's just really about putting it all together. And that's really what I like about golf. It puts you in this this um, this mindset where you have to really, really focus on your craft. And that's what translates over for football for me. I'm a professional football player. I can roll out of bed and do this stuff. And when I apply the, the mental aspect of football onto the mental, I mean, when I apply the, the mental aspect of golf onto the mental a- aspect of football, it helps me become a football player. No, I'm not out there swinging clubs on the football field, but the mental, it helps me really focus on me and my body and trying to be the best football player I can be. But have you ever gone driver on a par three and hit it to within a foot of the hole? Like no, man, no, ground. man. I got some buddies that I got, I got some buddies that, that pull out a driver on par threes, man. But I, you know, I, I got some, I got, you know, um, Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan Lambert at Dallas National. He's my, he's my, my golf coach, my golf fitter, mm. um, Ryan Locke. I mean, a Neil Locke over at Dallas National. They've been working with me. I got golf coaches over there at Dallas National. And um, whenever in the offseason, whenever I got time to go over there and do that stuff, I, I put all my focus into that stuff, man. And I, I actually, I truly believe that it makes me a football player because of the mental aspect of golf. Hmm. Well, it seems to work for Steph Curry. But again, Von Miller, he's hosting a charity event this week. Von's vision to distribute glasses to underserved kids. Von, thanks so much for your time and good luck in your recovery. 
Thanks, guys. I really appreciate y'all having me, man. I love the show, man. Y'all keep it going. I love to be back whenever you guys get ready. All right. Thank you.